So we have seen the importance of kidneys, how important they are. In case of kidney failure, say if the kidneys are failed to filter the blood or they stop functioning, what happens? So the toxic materials like urea, uric acid, creatinine, ammonia and all these materials get accumulated in the blood. So once the kidneys stop functioning and the change is not reversible, means that we cannot set back the kidneys to function, we call it as ESRD. The full form is end stage renal disease disorder. So in which the kidneys, they stop functioning completely. So in such cases, these waste materials like urea and other waste materials are accumulated in the blood. They are accumulated in the body tissues. The water is also accumulated in the body tissues called as uremia. This is the condition. Very dangerous. Then what is the solution for this problem? Here, for this condition, for ESRD, there are two solutions. One is temporary, the other one is permanent solution. So what is this temporary solution? Dialysis. And the permanent solution is kidney transplantation. So what is dialysis? Dialysis is a medical procedure in which the blood of a person is artificially purified or cleansed. The cleaning of the blood is done artificially with some kind of setup. So with the help of this setup, the blood is purified. Toxic materials like urea, uric acid and such materials are removed from the blood as the kidneys are totally failed. But it is a temporary process. The person has to go or carry on this dialysis procedure weekly twice or weekly once, weekly thrice. So for his life long, throughout his life. So that is the dialysis. We will see how the procedure of dialysis is carried out. The second one is kidney transplantation. So if there is any donor available, if there is any donor ready to donate a kidney, so in such cases the donor can give the kidney and the kidney can be transplanted to the person who is suffering with ESRD. We will see uh, what is the kidney transplant and uh, how it will be a successful uh, kidney transplant. Now first let us look at the dialysis. So let us see the process of dialysis. So dialysis is a medical procedure which is done with the help of a dialyzer. Dialyzer is the equipment or the machinery which helps for the process of dialysis. So for the process of dialysis, we need to have a dialyzer. So the dialyzer has got a chamber in which it contains some solution which is equivalent to blood. The solution is almost equivalent to blood. So such kind of uh, solution is there in the dialyzing chamber. So here the dialyzer is connected to the person through the artery and vein. The blood from the person's body whose both the kidneys are failed. So such person needs dialysis. So we call this as hemodialysis. So here the blood from the artery, artery of the person is collected and the collected blood is added with blood is added with anticoagulant like heparin. The blood should not coagulate because when the blood is in our body it doesn't co coagulate it will flow it does it will not clot but when the blood is taken out of the body into some equipment the there is a chance for clotting of the blood so to avoid the clotting of blood this anticoagulant called heparin is mixed with the blood now the blood cannot clot so the blood it flows into the tubes it enters into that here we have a set of pipes so these pipes are made up of semi permeable membranes we studied about semi permeable membranes in ninth class semi permeable membranes membranes so these semi permeable membranes they allow the process like diffusion and osmosis so that osmosis takes place so here whatever the 
dialyzing solution is there that solution is equal to the blood except red blood cells the dialyzing solution it will contain whatever is their plasma the same thing it contains except the blood cells here the blood from this person who is suffering with the kidney disease his blood contains more amount of urea so that urea is there in his blood but in the dialyzing solution that urea is not there so that urea it moves from the blood vessels it moves from these tubes into the dialyzing solution so the wastes are moved into the dialyzing solution so the blood is partly cleansed so the cleansed blood is again collected into the another tube and it is injected into the person's body through the vein but before it is injected into the body the heparin blockers will be added to stop the action of heparin so the anticoagulant is removed then the blood is again given back to the body through the veins it is supplied to the body so in this process this dialyzing solution is absorbing the toxic waste like urea and all so the dialyzing solution with the toxic materials is collected out so the total process it takes 3 to 6 hours depending upon the requirement the patient is advised to take dialysis weekly twice or weekly once likewise that is that will be prescribed by the doctor so by this method the blood can be cleansed the urea and other toxic wastes can be removed from the blood by the process of dialysis but this is a temporary solution for the persons for those both the kidneys are failed the permanent solution is kidney transplantation so the second one the permanent solution for kidney failure is kidney transplantation so in kidney transplantation kidney from a donor is transplanted into the person whose both the kidneys are failed so in case of this kidney transplantation here uh, the person who is donating the kidney he should be preferably a close relative of the person who is suffering to the patient because here the kidney whatever is transplanted into the patient the patient's body should accept the foreign body that is the kidney so due to the factors like immunity factors if there is any rejection the operation will be a failure so in earlier days the kidney transplant operations there the success rate it was 8 to 10% likewise but now with the increased modern techniques advanced techniques the success rate in the transplantation of the kidneys is increased so the kidneys are collected from the donors mostly the close relatives sometimes the kidneys and other organs are collected from the brain dead people from the brain dead people the kidneys are collected and they are transplanted to the healthy people so the kidney transplantation is the permanent solution this is the permanent solution but there are thousands and thousands of people those who are waiting for the donors to get the kidneys who are suffering from that uh, failure of kidneys both of their kidneys so they are looking for the donors there is a lot of demand and requirement of kidneys and looking for that um, donors who, who donate the kidneys to save their lives so now let us look at the other pathways of excretion in our bodies so we learned that the kidneys are the major organs for the excretion of waste like urea uric acid all the nitrogenous and toxic waste and extra water and mineral salts out of our body so apart from kidneys we have other organs also like skin and we have lungs and we have liver and we also have intestines intestines so these are all these organs they help in the process of excretion excreting the waste material sending the toxic materials out of our body if you see the skin our skin it allows a process called sweating by the process of sweating large amount of volume uh, large volume of water is excreted out of our body along with some salts so water and salts are excreted out of our body by the skin it has got sweat glands so it also has got sebum glands oil glands which secrete sebum sterols some kind of fats hydrocarbons and other oily materials 
cholesterol and other sterols fats hydrocarbons are excreted through the skin it is secreted out through the sebaceous glands present in the skin so in this way it helps in the excretion and lungs they excrete the waste gas that is produced in the cells during cellular respiration carbon dioxide is excreted out by the lungs and liver so liver is an organ which will detoxify many harmful chemicals drugs if you take any medicines the medicines are metabolized and finally made to harmless in your liver many of the chemical synthetic foods synthetic uh, food additives food colors if any artificial materials are added to the food so those artificial materials and substances are neutralized and detoxified by the liver so liver is an organ which detoxifies so many poisonous substances and it converts the substances into other non harmful forms then they are excreted out of our body so that is the job done by the liver so liver is also it plays an important role in converting the toxic materials to less toxic materials and helps in the process of excretion and intestines if you see the intestines intestines through intestines undigested food is excreted out we know that the undigested food is passed out as a fecal matter and the large intestines they also secrete certain salts like uh, excess calcium and magnesium and iron the unabsorbed iron the excess iron these are all secreted by the large intestine and they are excreted out so in this way along with kidneys the other organs are also they are playing a role in the excretion of toxic materials and other useless harmful substances to get rid of such harmful substances all these systems are helping so we have seen what kind of excretion and excretory system is there in human beings then how about other animals so do they have the excretory system if you look at the different levels of organisms in different phylum they have different levels of excretory organs but anyway the human organ excretory system is the very well developed and complex excretory system now just uh, let us look at uh, the excretory system of other animals the various kinds of animals in the animal kingdom so now let us look at the excretion in other organisms we have seen in humans we have a pair of kidneys ureter urinary bladder and the excretory system it's a very complex system if we see uh, the other organisms right from the simplest form protozoa unicellular organism even in their body that is in the in their cell excretory materials are produced how do they get rid of such materials if you see that amoeba is a protozoan in the body of amoeba the body itself is a single cell the wastes are produced and these wastes are collected into a small bubble like structure called as contractile vacuole contractile so this contractile vacuole collects the waste material and it swells up that it grows in size and this contractile vacuole it reaches the surface then it burst opens and releases the waste outside in such a way the contractile vacuole helps in the excretion of waste materials in protozoa so in protozoa like amoeba and uh, unicellular organisms so we see that uh, the kind of uh, simple methods like osmosis the osmotic method of excretion of waste materials is seen in protozoa if we come to the next one porifera in case of porifera we see the sponges their bodies having so many pores the water can flow through their bodies the water it enters the bodies all the cells are bathed with water so the waste can be easily released or left into the water as the cells are exposed to water so such kind of excretion takes place in porifera it does not require any special excretory system as their cells are exposed to the water currents so now let us look at the platyhelminthes and nematoda in platyhelminthes and nematoda this is the first phylum in which we see special excretory organs called as flame cells the flame cells are found here platyhelminthes planaria we see the flame cells so the next one annelida we find nephridia nephridia so these nephridia are found in annelids earthworm if you see the earthworm you find nephridia or the excretory organs 
and the next one arthropoda if we look at arthropoda in arthropoda we see that green glands green glands and malpighian tubules malpighian tubules green glands and malpighian tubules are found in arthropoda and if you see the mollusca metanephridia metanephridia and echinodermata they have water channels through which the water flows and excretion takes place and reptiles birds and mammals we find the kidneys so these are the various kinds of excretory organs that help various organisms to excrete the waste nitrogenous waste produced in their bodies